Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim, and this is activity two of our Tetrix Prism programming guide. This one is called Moving Your DC Motors, and this is kind of the next step. The first video, we obviously, the first activity, we, we flashed the lights on the prism, but now we wanna move on to actually uh, attaching a motor and actually moving that motor. So uh, let's figure out what we need. We've got obviously our prism here, just like we did before. We've got our wiring harness. We still got that hooked up. We've got our charge battery. We have our USB cable, but this time we are adding the power cable for our motor and also a DC motor. Uh, so let me go ahead and just hook that up so we have that done. See, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, attach the, the motor cable end and the other end I'm going to go ahead and just plug into my prism box just like this. Again red to black and you can see that I've got a very simple connection there. So <clears throat> now that we've got our parts needed let's move on to actually what we uh, the first part of our uh, activity which is obviously opening the example sketch. Again We've kind of covered the fact that we feel like the best way for you to kind of learn this stuff is by example. So we've provided an example. So if you'll actually go into your uh, launch your Arduino software and let's do that. And obviously it opens up into a blank window. If you already have it open and you've got a sketch that you want to save, remember to save that uh, so for future reference if you need to. But once you open your Arduino software, you can go to file you go to examples and when we can go down to the pull down menu uh, and Tetrix Prism. And then we want getting started activity to move DC motor. And when we launch that, the sketch will uh, pop up here and in a new window, just like that. I'm gonna expand this so I can see the whole screen there. Move it side by side of my blank window just so we can kind of again by comparison see the difference between a program that we've written and one that we have uh, brand new. Now in our actually uh, building the knowledge base in the first activity we concentrated on the, the connections as far as creating that knowledge base of what it meant to make solid connections but in this one we want to we want to do um, more into the structure of what actually you're going to be looking at in the sketch. So the first thing that is you and you look in your example sketch at the top we have something that is called comments. Now comments are meant to actually show you or explain what the program intent is. Uh, in other words if you have written this uh, program yourself you can leave yourself some notes to remind you later on when you come back what your intent was or if someone else is coming behind you, these are notes that you can leave in the program. They don't impact the program or the sketch. They're just there to help explain what your thought process was or what the intent or expected behavior of the program is. So at the top of the sketch, you can see we've got something that says this uh, prism controller example program is supposed to spin the DC motor for one to five seconds, then coast to a stop. Uh, after stopping, it's going to spin in the opposite direction. It's going to continue to repeat until the red reset button is pressed. Now those are all in a complete block. Those are blocked out comments. They do not impact the, the program at all. If you get on further into the program, you see some more comments that are line by line uh, explaining what the intent of the program is. So once we've done that, let's go ahead and let's actually uh, upload this and see what happens. So I'm going to finish my connections here. I'm going to go ahead and connect to my computer with the USB. I'm going to connect the other end to my prism box. I'm going to turn my box on. See that I've got my indicator light that shows I've got a, a solid connection, got power. I've got a solid green light here that says I'm ready to accept any programs. And in my application I've got two buttons again we can verify that's just going to make sure that the program is a valid program nothing's wrong and then I can upload so I'm going to do that real quick show here that I've got data that's coming from my computer my little orange lights got a solid green light there and I'm ready to execute so let me go ahead and try this and we can see what happens now I'm going to show it in just like this for right now a couple things I want you to look for 
This is in motor port one, and there should be two red L or LEDs that show up that uh, indicate direction. So let's execute this. Oh, it's going in one direction. You see the motor spinning. I've got a red LED. About five seconds. Spinning in the opposite direction. Different LED. Coast to the stop. And it's going to repeat that. I'm going to stop that just for a minute. Now, if you need something to help uh, show just a little bit, just for the video, you don't need this to actually do the activity, but I'm going to put this on here just so you might see that a little bit better. And we're going to try that again. Leisure to see the spin of the motor. About five seconds. Again, it's going to reverse direction, and that's going to continue based on my comments in the pro in the uh, program until I hit the red reset. Do that right there. Okay. So now that we've done, we've actually executed the code. Let's talk a little bit about um, in the moving forward section what we're actually have done. Now the first thing that I want to uh, point out is that we're we talked about our comments and how they explain what the, the intent of the program is but we've also got some things in our main loop that are different than what we had before. We've got uh, functions that's called prism.setMotorPower uh, and then we also have the delay. Now the delay is the same as what we had before and that's basically just designating a duration. But the set motor power has two parameters in the parentheses and those are values that we can change that impact the behavior of the motor. The first one uh, basically just talks about which motor we're addressing. We have two motors that we can address. So that first uh, value there could be one or two and that would uh, indicate which channel that we're going to uh, actually um, send the message to. The second value, the 25, is indicating of uh, a scale of 1 to 100, the power percentage level. So at this, at this particular um, um, function, we're saying that we want to turn that motor on for 25% of the 100% available percentage of power. Now you'll see down after the first delay, then we also use the same command, but we're putting it at zero. Uh, and that basically is telling the motor to coast. And then the next one is a minus 25. That's what gives us our direction. So we have positive values and negative values. values and they indicate or correspond to the direction we want the motors to spin. So once we've done that, Let's go ahead and um, talk a little bit about um, the, the real-world connections. Um, obviously, there's, there's several things that we can talk about when we uh, DC motors or electric motors. One of the things that you might see nowadays is the fact that you're seeing more electric cars. And these electric cars, for them to actually work, uh, properly and actually do what we want them to do on the road, they have to coordinate the direction of those motors as they spin those motors together, whether it be in a turn or going in a straight line. So this has a very real type of a connection to those type of devices. Um, stem connections. There are several things when you think about how DC motors work, angular vo velocity, uh, the technology between power voltage, cur uh, current, torque, math, um, a pulse width modulation, revolutions per, ma uh, per minute. So there's lo lots of stem connections that we can actually uh, work with in that. And then obviously the next thing we want you to, to kind of take this example and recreate it. Um, play with the values. What happens for us if we actually change the values? And let's do that real quick. If I um, change my 25 in my program and I put that at 50, um, and I'm going to just change one side of that just so that we see it should go faster in one direction than it did in the other. I'm going to put this back on so we can see the, the effect of that. But let's go ahead and upload that. It's uploading. See my little data lights. Done. I've got a green light there. I'm going to go ahead and execute it. Now, I should be able to expect to see a, a faster spin in one direction. So let's try it and see what happens. Yep. Go a little faster that way. Five seconds. Gonna slow. I didn't change the speed in that direction. Back to the faster. So you can see 
um, how we can impact that sketch just with simple changes of parameters. Again, uh, the other thing that I want to uh, point out is in our uh, sketch window, the other thing that we want to notice, if you've looked at that, uh, some of the functions have a little bit different color, and that's because we've got keywords that are being involved here. So if I begin to type this in, if I, in my uh, moving forward, or my hacking the code uh, activity, you can see that with that simple change, uh, it doesn't see that when I remove the R as a valid command. So it changed colors, but when I add my R back, you see that it actually said, oh, I recognize that as a keyword, that's a valid uh, command. So that helps with the syntax that we talked about earlier. So I hope you found that beneficial. I would encourage you to go ahead and take the time in this hacking the code activity to experiment with this on your own, change the duration, change the speed, see how you can impact with moving your DC motor. So I hope you found that beneficial instructional. And again, have some fun there, build some robots, come back and see us for more.